I just, because there's nothing in your life you're really going to be consistent about. I sort of thought, if I have views now, I'll hold them forever. And life just doesn't work like that. There's things in my life I've absolutely adored that now I hate. Even small things like MasterChef. Like, <laughs> I thought MasterChef was for life. I made a commitment to MasterChef when I watched it young. And now I, I still watch it, even though I hate it, obviously. I watch a lot of TV I hate, because otherwise you're just drinking in the dark. <laughs> Always best if there's a collar and a shape in the room, isn't there? <laughs> I'm not pissed. I'm watching the pink man do an egg. <laughs> and I, because when I was young, it was so. If if you if you're about 18, 19, I'm afraid you won't understand the era of MasterChef I'm talking about. Because there was an era of MasterChef when all it was was just a parade of milfs <laughs> cooking dinner for Lloyd Grossman. That's <laughs> all it was. Lloyd would just sit there in the studio going hungry, hungry, <laughs> and then milf after milf would arrive. I apologise for using the term MILF. I wish I didn't know what it was, but I'm afraid I live in a generation where porn is just everywhere. <laughs> it's just everywhere, and I'm not strong enough. I, I'm not saying... It's not like a, yeah, I watch a lot of porn, oh, I love to... I hate myself for watching porn. I just can't resist, because... <laughs> it's too easy for me. As a man, it's just too easy. I can type titties on a computer, and titties come up. <laughs> Instantly, titties, titties! I don't even have to spell it right. I can spell it wrong. They'll go, did you mean titties? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I only had one hand. <laughs> there should be something that just... A little pop-up screen that comes up and says, Oi, pervert. <laughs> if you're so sad and lonely that you need to see some titties, then you just click OK and I will show you some titties. But you should know, from all the women in the world, we hate you. <laughs> You're a pathetic, sad, lonely individual, and I hope you cry when this is done. But you click OK and I'll show you some titties, all right? That would be enough some of the time, not all of the time. <laughs> but some of the time, just to make me think, ah, oh, I should probably use what's left of my imagination. <laughs> but there's nothing, and I, there's a weird atmosphere where women will be watching this and there's this assumed... Women are like, oh, actually, I didn't like pornography. I actually I prefer to read stories. I prefer to remember sensual moments from my past. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Everyone likes the same thing every now and again. And I have this theory that actually the reason men watch pornography isn't because they're not romantic, it's actually because they're too romantic. <laughs> and that there is the sound of only women laughing. <laughs> because the men are going, fucking go on, son. <laughs> Oh, I haven't laughed yet, but if he nails this, I'll go to every gig he does for the rest of his life. <laughs> I just think, at least with pornography, there's no presumption of a happy ending, is there? There's not... If you remember lovely moments from your past, they're still going to be there when you finish the task in hand, and you're going to feel even lonelier. At least with porn, it's so clearly a miserable experience that at least when it's done, you could... Because it's not a happy thing, is it? It's not like when you really fancy a glass of wine, and you're like, oh, I really feel better now. You feel worse after. I just, oh, God, I'm so alone. <laughs> and now I'm just covered in it. <laughs> at least well, you just turn the laptop off and you go, well, at least they're not happy either. Um, <laughs> so there was all these MILFs uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, and there was nothing for them to do but cook dinner for Lloyd Grossman. They would arrive and they would say, OK, Lloyd, there you go, that's asparagus sifle there. I mean, that's the sort of thing I cook at home for Mabatha and Tabatha and Jabatha and Cabatha and <laughs> Mabatha and Sabatha. And then Lloyd would have a little bit and he'd go, Oh, no, no, I remember. <laughs> and you couldn't understand a word he was saying. But it didn't matter, because it was just nice telly, wasn't it? It was aspirational. And I would watch it with my mum and my sister. And my mum would say, Oh, that'll be you one day, John, on MasterChef. I'd be like, oh, I should be so nervous, Mama. What if the souffle didn't rise? <laughs> <laughs> As if I had any idea what a souffle was. <laughs> If you'd have offered me a ramekin at that age, I would have found the police. <laughs> you know, police. You said I was going to ram something into my next of kin. Um, and I used to like it. It was just nice and it was aspirin. And now it's this horrible, angry... Like, episode one now is generally, if they don't get these eggs right, we're going to give them AIDS. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not saying it's not good telly. It's well made, isn't it? You watch it because by the middle of episode one, there's a character you like. like well, I've got to watch this now to find out if Steve the Welder gets to open a cafe. Because <laughs> he wants to cook. He's tired of burning his big fat hands on the welding. <laughs> and you're really bought into... You're never going to meet this prick for the rest of your life. But by episode five, I'm punching people I love. 
Just, if she gets to the final, I'm going to kill all of us, because she can do puddings, but she can't do mains. <laughs> I don't understand how they make me give such a shit. There's people in my family I don't care about as much as Steve the Welder for ten weeks. <laughs> And then he has his epiphany, he has his epiphany where they go to the restaurant. And up until now, let me tell you this, Steve can cook, right? We all know this, his flavours are incredible. <laughs> it's just his presentation. I mean, <laughs> what are you doing, Steve? He's just throwing it on the plate from across the room. I mean, you're not cooking for a family of four, just the first bite is with the eye, Steve. <laughs> I'm pleased to have introduced that phrase to some of you, you clearly didn't know. <laughs> And then they go to this restaurant and Steve realises, I've got big fat hands, but I can be delicate if I want to. <laughs> I can cook pudding. And then they come back to the studio and he'll just do something delicate, like a little lemon mousse. It's just simple, it's just lemon and sugar and cream, but he'll just fire that ring mould and he'll lift it off. And you're like, oh, it was liquid when it went in there, it's solid now. <laughs> he's become a wizard. <laughs> well, that's enough for me, you slide that over, but he's not done. A little bit of icing sugar around the plate. Oh, is it winter? Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> He's finished now, aren't you, Steve? He's not finished. Mint leaf, raspberry. Oh! <laughs> he's still not finished. What's happening over here? He's got a little pan of sugar on the go here and it's melting, but it's not freaking him out. It's all right. <laughs> I know that we're going to happen. It goes brown and runny. <laughs> and then he just drips his spoon in it like that and he twizzles it around something like his knife sharpener. So he's got like a big helter-skelter of sugar. And then when it's gone hard... <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say that and not laugh, but it's... <laughs> When it's gone, ah, oh, you know, just slide it off the end. <laughs> and you're watching it thinking, don't touch that, you fat-handed bastard, you'll break it. <laughs> it's only delicate, you'll crumble it. And he wanders over to the plate like a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> and he just rests it against that lemon mousse. And then it's incredible. And he just slides it over to Greg Wallace. He'll come in with his big fucking spoon. <laughs> Smash it on the head. And then he'll look at that. And despite the fact he's worked in catering all his adult life, he will lose his marbles. <laughs> Tears flying from his face. <laughs> You're a welder and you done sugar, what's going on? <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. Maybe not, Greg. Does it not remind you a little bit of the last series when an accountant did exactly the same thing? <laughs> And the one before that when a midwife did it. And if you're not finally clocked on that, if people cook the same pudding for a month, they're a little bit good at it by the end, mate. <laughs> and then he cries for 29 minutes, just rolling around on the floor in a pool of his own piss and tears. <laughs> and then he finally gets it together. You think, he's cooked this mousse, he's not even going to try it finally. He gets a spoon and he just puts it in the mousse like that. And then he puts it in his mouth and he just leaves it there for an inexplicable amount of time. <laughs> until you start to think, I think he's forgotten he's put that spoon in his mouth. <laughs> I think TV's Greg Wallace is going to live the rest of his adult life with a spoon hanging out of his mouth here. And then when you're sure that's what's going to happen, he'll slowly tease it out of his mouth so that all you can see is the little streak of spitty mousse. <laughs> it hasn't quite got in all this time. And then they go back for some more and you think, you're spitting in the mousse, Greg! <laughs> John Tarot hasn't had any of that yet, you pig. <laughs> Might as well have just gone, oh, this is lovely, John. Do you want some? It makes me so angry now. 